Hello, my name is Jeff Barani. I'm the tech lead for public safety at Esri and a member of our disaster response team. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today. What I want to talk to you about is some of our lessons learned from gaining insight from the crowd and social media through our experience through our disaster response program and also some specialized uh, applications that we've built and made available as templates. For many years, almost 20 years, Esri has supported our users as, we've, as they've deployed to support disaster. Sometimes this is right there next to them, sometimes this is in more of a support role. One thing that, one event that has really stuck out in my mind is this uh, response uh, back in 2002. A lot of wildfires throughout the US. The people needed to make strategic resource allocation decisions. We were heads down trying to support them. But the public got great value out of this application. This was almost uh, 10 years ago. This is something that really stuck out with me. In the fall of 2009, we made a more concerted effort to have uh, mapping products on our website in support of our disaster response program. We included live feeds of information, you know, base maps, but we needed another source of information to give us really timely information of the crowd. Um, obviously, this is a challenge. We wanted to make data from the crowd a first-class citizen from a GIS perspective. That presents challenges. Maybe not the data is not as rigorous as we might like from a GIS perspective, but there's value there, really from the timeliness of the information. When a disaster is when the altruistic, altruistic nature of the crowd comes out, they think more geospatially than we probably give them credit for. They have GISs in their car, they call them GPSs, and they're enabled to communicate information via their phones. So, we, so for this application that we worked on, uh, we took, uh, looked at many of the social media platforms that are out there. Many have a, a location element to those, and we could use those to put information on the map coming from these various uh, platforms. Here's a couple of examples. A lot of, we've, unfortunately, we've had a lot of experience deploying these applications with all the recent events over the past uh, two and a half years. Really got its legs in, in uh, Haiti, we used it uh, domestically for various events, and here you see recent examples from Japan and Thailand. From this experience, we've really kind of learned four key lessons you know, coming out of, of this in terms of what value it can provide. Providing insight, being able to tell the story of an event or document it, document it provide situation awareness, and we know the crowd can go to work. In this example from the Japan earthquake, looking at the, the trends in Yushihidi data, over time we can see the concentrations of reports of power outages change on a day-by-day -day, uh, basis. This is some of the insight that uh, people were looking for. For the Sudan referendum, by analyzing tweets, we can see who's tweeting, the concentration of those messages, and then when we normalize that by geography, we can see uh, what countries and what states are generating the most interest. The redder colors here uh, really stick out. An evolving trend is more and more command and control uh, applications or situation awareness applications turning to social media to provide information, just like uh, weather or other kind of traditional sources of information that they might apply. Here's an example from the Texas wildfires. Governments, uh, local governments in the U.S. are mobilizing the public to be responders for them. Here in this case from Hamilton County, Tennessee, they asked the, repub the public to report in damage from some of the storms that happened uh, in the spring of this year in the southeast. One of the other tools that we're working on is mobilizing the public, uh, excuse me, mobilizing our user base to collect information for OpenStreetMap, both before and after an event. There's an extension for the desktop tools to do this that, that's free to, to download. Certainly challenges, frustrating challenges, remain with social media and, and VGI. Um, obviously, p privacy and offensive lag, uh, language, not a lot of the information is geotagged. We want this to be higher. Uh, and terms of service are changing frequently and kind of a lack of protocol for collecting that information. One of the new things that we're working on is a tool for the desktop to be able to connect to a Yushihidi instance. So this is something that you can download and is available today, something new that we've been working on. So being able to bring in information from Yushihidi and be able to do analysis on it. So here's an example of, of from Thailand, the recent floodings there. So here we're looking at a hotspot map of the reports of flooding. Even more so, we can use different uh, GIS tools to look at where are the reports that are statistically significant, where do I need to focus on. Here we're seeing uh, the ellipses of, of concentrations of reports changing over time, and you can basically see the flooding coming into Bangkok. Uh, 
Through this experience, it's, it, you know, in summary, and through this experience, it made me really kind of think about uh, this guy right here, Carl Linnaeus, the father of modern taxonomy. As we're looking at the different instances of, of Yushihidi, how do you compare you know, election monitoring, the data that's there, or with disasters, to even zombie reports? So what's the common structure amongst all that? This, that's, that's basically it. Here's a couple of URLs for you to write down in 15 seconds, and we'll be happy to talk to you more uh, throughout the event. And we're really looking for your feedback on some of the things that we're uh, looking at. So thank you very much.